In today's video, I'm down on my knees, trying to get some macro. Starting off down here with this single snowdrop that I found, it's standing by itself, it looks very, very pretty. And I wanna shoot this two different ways. I'm gonna try, first of all, just with the natural light. So I'm gonna to have to go wide open with my aperture f2.8, because it is quite shady down here. You can probably see that there is a lot of light coming in. Above me is quite bright. Down here, I am in the shadows. So f2.8, the wind is blowing a little bit, so I don't wanna have a shutter speed anything less than 80th of a second, in case it gets all blurry. So that means I'm gonna to need to up my ISO a little bit to get a decent shot. Somewhere around ISO 200, manually focused. But I'm gonna try it again in portrait orientation. I think I can fill the frame a little bit more and make a little bit more use of the um, snowdrops stem coming up. I think it's a slightly nicer composition there. Same settings, 2.8, 80th of a second. And that's a pretty enough photo, but I do think that by bringing in my light here, I can probably do a little bit better. So I need to change my settings up. I'm gonna use a shutter speed of 200th of a second. My aperture is gonna be much higher f11 and we can bring that ISO right back to 100 which is its minimum and I want to be holding my light up somewhere around here slightly off um, angle to the um, to the flower and slightly above as well so that it gets this nice beam effect casting down let's take a quick test and I think that's looking pretty good um, but I definitely think I can refine it and I also want to cast a little bit more light on the uh, stem itself because that's fallen a little bit too much into shadow I'm going to manually focus on the petals, make sure they are nice and sharp, like that. Light in position. It's a huge difference, but I actually really love the dramatic simplicity of the shot using the flash. It's got a real fine art feel to it, with just the suggestion of the flower being visible, rather than all of it being perfectly lit. And it also eliminates all of that distracting background. I actually really like both looks. I like that natural light shot and I like the much more dramatic studio style image that we've taken with the flash. So it is always handy carrying a flash so that you can get both of those completely different looks, even though your subject hasn't changed. This though is definitely a shot I think that works better with natural light and especially works better with a really wide open aperture. I'm shooting at my maximum f2.8 right now. The reason is I really want that shallow depth of field. It creates the depth between the, uh, between the snowdrops that are closer to the camera and the ones that are further away. If we used an aperture of f11, we wouldn't get that. But same again here, I'm at 2.8, ISO 100, had to use a shutter speed of a 50th of a second, manually focused. Just to test it out though, I will take the same shot using my flash, see if I was right or wrong about whether this is better with natural light. Same again, bring the light up, settings at f, uh, f9, 200th of a second. And definitely, I don't like this shot um, anything like as much as the natural light one, because we've used that higher aperture, we've lost that same depth, um, that distance between the, um, the spacing of the snowdrops themselves. Um, and I just don't think it, it needs flash here. It's a little bit too harsh. I prefer the more fresh, open, natural light version. I've turned the flash off now, so we get rid of that. I've also taken my camera off this little um, mobile tripod that I brought. The reason is, is that I want to get really, really low down the camera right on the floor, almost shooting up at these snowdrops. Um, I think it's a really, really nice angle on it. But because we've also got some pools of light in the background, when I'm shooting wide open at f2.8, that gives some really lovely bokeh around the flowers. And I just think it really gives the shot an extra little element, which I really like, despite having to shoot in quite an awkward position. 
Same again. In fact, I'm going to go to autofocus for this. I'm at f2.8, ISO 100, 200th of a second. Tap to focus. Ah, oh, yeah, these look really nice. Very pleased with these. So I found a few more little uh, snowdrops that I think works really well in a composition, but they only work from certain angles, and I'll show you what I mean. So it's these ones here, and if I shoot from this angle, the shot is nice enough, but the background is really quite dark. So when we actually take our image, it's just not that compelling. We also get quite a bit of overlap between two of the flowers, but it's a very easy fix. If we just take our camera and move it round, and you can see we've got this lovely patch of bright in the background. And because we're shooting wide open, we get some lovely depth of field. And so if we just move our camera here, suddenly we have completely transformed that image. And I've moved the camera all of half a foot, you know, a few inches really, but it has completely transformed this shot, taking it from being fairly boring, with not a lot going on, into something much more dreamy and spring-like. That's really all I've done. I moved it from here to here, here to here. I haven't moved. My knees are still in the dirt. It's awful. But it's that tiny shift in the camera is all it takes to absolutely transform this shot. So let's actually take it. Wide open, f2.8, focusing on the flowers. 160th of a second. And again, we only get that beautiful out of focus bokeh around the flowers, those great pockets of light in the background because we're shooting wide open at f2.8. If I change up my settings, just to show you, ISO 1250 f8, that shot has much less impact. It still sort of works, but you don't get that dreaminess, I don't think. I definitely prefer the one wide open. So I found one more flower, and again, I want to use natural light for this. I want to use a wide open f2.8 aperture. Of course, when we do that, we don't get all of the flower in focus. We just get the only little tiny sliver that we actually focus on. So the petals in the foreground and the petals in the background are out of focus. Now for this shot, that is exactly what I want. You get that uh, shallow depth of field dreaminess in the scene, which is very much the point of this image for me. But I do want those um, little stamen in the middle of the flower to be pin sharp. So I'm actually going to use focus stacking here, focusing at different points of those stamen to get those nice and sharp. But I'm not going to do focus stacking for the whole thing. I don't want the whole flower to be in focus. I want that depth of field, but I don't want it on those stamens. So I'm just being very selective about where I'm using focus stacking. But the principle is exactly the same as it would be if I was focus stacking the whole thing. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to focus on the stamen at the front of the image and take my shot. I'm going to zoom back in, focus slightly further back those stamen, take my next shot, focus again, focus right on the tips of those long ones poking out, wait till the breeze goes, and I take another shot. My focus stacking process is pretty simple. I select the three images in Lightroom and go to Edit and Open as Layers in Photoshop, which will stack the images on top of each other in a single Photoshop document. I select those layers, go to Edit, and firstly auto-align the layers to make sure that they line up, and then go to Edit and auto-blend the layers to merge the in-focus parts together. The result is a shot with the middle of the flower much sharper, but still maintaining that shallow depth of field look with the rest of the flower. I do really like this flower though, so I'm gonna play around with my flash and getting much, much closer up on those stamens, see if I can get anything interesting. I played around for a little while with my flash here, trying some slightly different angles on the flower itself. I like this wider view that captures the whole flower, and as with the earlier image, I like the fine art aesthetic I've achieved with the lighting here. 
But that brings me to an end of today's video. I hope you found it useful, and if you have enjoyed it, then do please hit that like button, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.